And what I did is required to be active in your drone on September 16, 2023. My guess is that you're probably not ready. Finding if your drone is compliant and also broadcasting is not as easy as we wish. We put this through the test and we're gonna walk you through all the steps that you need to figure it out. Let's get to it. For this video, I'm gonna invite you to click around and find all the different things that you wanna learn about using the timestamps down here. I'm gonna explain what Remote ID is. If you're familiar with this, you can skip. I'm gonna go over four different manufacturers. We'll talk about DJI, Autel, Parrot, and Skydio. Now be sure to not miss the very last bit of the video where I talk about the FAA drone zone and the registration process, how you can register or update your registration for Remote ID. Now, before we go into all the details about how you're gonna do this, let's talk about Remote ID because some of you may not be familiar with the term, although we do have a lot of videos that cover this on the channel already. Remote ID is gonna be the technology that's gonna be in your drone that's going to broadcast a message. It's gonna broadcast your serial number, it's gonna broadcast the location of your drone, the location of your remote controller and then a bit more information that's going to be broadcasted to the world. And the FAA says that as of September 2023, you're going to have to comply and have remote ID on board of your drone. You have 20 seconds to comply. And there's two different methods. You can buy a drone that already has remote ID. We're going to call this standard remote ID. The FAA calls it that. So you have your newer drones, you have DJI drones in here. All these drones actually on here are standard remote ID drones. Or you'll be able to put one of these little things right here, which is a remote ID module. I'm going to cover the remote ID module towards the end of the video. So uh, if you drone, if you know your drone is not compliant already, you'll find information over there. Now, for each of these manufacturers, I'm going to cover two different steps, two different things that you have to verify. I'm going to help you determine if your drone is actually compliant. We're going to find if your drone is actually broadcasting. Because it's compliant doesn't mean it's broadcasting just yet. You need to verify that it does it. Kind of a big deal because one doesn't mean the other. Let's head over to the FAA website so we can find if your drone is compliant. You go on UASD doc.fa.gov. That's the short link. We'll put a link down in the description as well for you. And then you'll see there a list of what's called DOC. It's the Declaration of Compliance. This is where the FA has a list of approved drones that can be used for standard remote ID. So let's get into this. And right here, what I want you to do is I want you to go to this area here where it says filter by, and you're gonna filter by remote ID, RID, not OOP because OOP is operation over people. Different topic completely. Once you're in here, I want you to go to the search bar right here. You can go ahead and type your keyword for your specific drone. Now, before we do that, I do want to mention a bit of uh, information about the serial number because we're going to be looking at a bunch of serial numbers in here. Every manufacturer has a slightly different way of looking at their serial number. The one commonality though that we found is that all of these serial numbers that are approved for remote ID are NCANSI compliant, which means that they are 20 characters long. This is a standard that the FA required for all drones that are compliant with Remote ID. So you may see your drone having a smaller serial number. It probably means that either your drone hasn't been updated just yet or that your drone is actually not compliant with Remote ID. So at the beginning, there's five characters that are gonna be what we call the manufacturer prefix. So DJI, for example, is 1581 Foxtrot. That means all DJI drones that are Remote ID compliant, their serial number is gonna start with that number. Autel, for example, is 1748. Charlie. Parrot is going to be 1588 Echo and Skydio is 1668 Bravo. So make sure that when you go into your controller and you find the serial number, that's what they're going to start with. That means that more than likely your drone is actually Remote ID compliant. Now we're going to get started with DJI, the first one, because well, largest drone manufacturer right now at the moment. DJI is a bit of a mess because <laughs> they're using the aircraft serial number, they're using the battery serial number, they're using a remote controller serial number. There's sometimes we've seen that they use a remote ID serial number, most commonly to all of the drones that we've seen, there's a flight controller serial number. More than likely, 99% chance your remote ID serial number and your flight controller serial number are gonna be the same. So for DJI, that's the number that you wanna be looking at. Now make sure before you do any of this that your drone is updated with the latest update on the controller and on the aircraft, all right? So from here, let's go ahead and take a look at the Mavic 3 Classic. So I'm gonna go in here, Mavic 3 Classic, right? I'm gonna type this. And then there's three different Mavics. There's a whole bunch of them that were approved. So I'm gonna click on the Classic because this is one that we have on the table right here. And you can see we have Mavic 3 Classic has been approved. And then there's a serial number list. It starts with 1581 Foxtrot. I told you this is DJI's prefix. And then 67 Papa and then anything else from 0000 to 
six, seven, Papa, and then F, 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 F. So that covers all the serial numbers in here. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna power up our Mavic 3 Classic, and then we're gonna look at the controller to make sure that these numbers are the same. First thing you do, make sure you power up your drone. There you go, here's the little beep. Make sure you power up your controller, and then we're going to get into the settings right here. Once you're into the app, tap in the top, uh, three little dots in the top right corner, go to the About section, and then from here, you're gonna scroll. Again, make sure you add the latest update, and then you'll be able to see here that we have a flight controller serial number starting with 1581 Foxtrot, and then it says 67 uh, Papa Bravo, okay? 67 Papa Bravo fits within the 67 Papa Zero to 67 Papa Foxtrot. This means that this drone is remote ID compliant. Now we're not done yet. We're not done because we need to make sure that not only is it compliant, but also that it is broadcasting. If you go back to the homepage by just tapping on the screen and you tap in the top left corner, you will see that remote ID functionality is normal. This means that your drone is good to go. It is remote ID compliant. You're not done just yet. If you're not interested in the other brands, make sure you head over by using the timestamps down here into the section where I talk about how to go in the drone zone and update your drone information in there or actually register the drone. Now, what might happen is that DJI drones, some of them, unfortunately, are not Remote ID compliant. How would you know? Well, two key facts that you can look for. The first one is that your serial number is too short, so it would probably be eight to 10 digits-ish, and then also that it's not showing that it's broadcasting in the top menu where I clicked and I just showed you. Now, another quick note in here is that the original smart controller from DJI, this one right here, the one that has the antennas that go up like this, does not seem to be Remote ID compliant. We had a bunch of issues with ours and the Air 2S. The Air 2S, the serial numbers are good. It is Remote ID compliant, but when using this controller, it was not able to transmit. It's actually not even showing us the full uh, Remote ID uh, serial number on here. When we plug it in into the newer controller, then we actually had the ability to see the signal and also see the full serial number. So just be careful if you have one of the, this is the original smart controller and it's not gonna be compliant. Now let's talk about Autel because Autel does things, well, slightly differently. Now, Autel uses what's called the aircraft serial number. I wanna make sure that you understand that some of Autel's drone are actually not Remote ID compliant. We do have the original Autel Evo 2 here sitting on the table. This is the V1 and the V1 and also the V2 actually are not uh, remote ID compliant, only the new version, the V3. Now we also have a smaller drone. You may have a smaller drone like the Autel Nano Plus right here. This is a sub 250 uh, gram drone. And these drones don't need to be remote ID compliant if you're flying them for recreational purposes. Now, if you fly them for part 107, sub 250 gram still needs to be remote ID compliant. And then lastly here, uh, we have the Autel Light Plus and the Light Plus is actually remote ID compliant. So I'm gonna show you how we can get this one, make sure that it is good, that it actually Actually fits uh, within the serial numbers. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna head again into our compliance uh, website for the DOC website with the FAA. And this time we're going to type light. Now the reason I typed it this way and not Autel is because I wanted to show you uh, there's two different approval for the light plus. So this is the drone that we have. Here's the Light Plus right here. And there's also right underneath it, there's also the Light Plus right here. You can click on View again. And in here, you will be able to see the serial number range, which starts with 1748 Charlie, which is the approval for Autel. And then after that, we have an LTC A2239, blah, blah, blah. It keeps on going. Now, what we would do is we would fire up this drone, power it up, plug in our phone, and then go into the settings, and then we would be able to find our own serial number. Now, I do want to mention something here, which is the fact that the approval that they have online starts with LTC. Our drone is LTO, which means that our drone at the moment is not Remote ID compliant, even though in the settings it is showing as broadcasting Remote ID. Now, I did reach out to Autel about this and they mentioned that the LTO serial numbers are being submitted to the FA to get approved. So even if your drone starts with LTO, it may still be Remote ID compliant once the FA approves it. Now, let's go ahead and talk about Skydio. Uh, Skydio has a few drones that are approved. If we go on the FA website right here and you type Skydio, 
you will notice that they have the Schedule X2E, which is this drone right here. The Schedule uh, 2 Plus, which is not this drone right here. This is the Schedule 2. So if you have a Schedule 2, not Remote ID approved. X2E is Remote ID approved. You notice there's two versions. There's a V1 and a V2. Uh, we were able to run uh, the serial number. So you would go in here, click on the approval, and then you would see that the serial number range is right here. Starts with 1668 Bravo, which is Skadio's prefix approval. And then you would be able to see the uh, the Juliet e E10, Juliet Alpha, and then 000, and then E10, Juliet Alpha, 00ZZZ. So they basically have about 10,000, 9,999 of these serial numbers that are approved in here. Ours felt in there. So if you go in here and you go to this smart controller uh, that comes with the X2E, you can go Go into the details and then you'll be able to see the uh, NC serial number in here that starts with the 1668 Bravo and then uh, be able to compare it. One thing that we haven't been able to see with Skydio is if the drone is actually broadcasting. This is not an information that uh, is available in the app. So we have to, <laughs> at this stage, uh, expect that it is actually broadcasting and sending the signal. Now, as far as Parrot is concerned, same thing. We can go on the FA website right here, type Parrot, and then we'll see that the Anafi USA and the Anafi AI have been approved uh, by the FA to do this. And if you go actually in the app, inside the app uh, on the Parrot Anafi AI, for example, uh, you can go into the advanced tab and then go into the connections tab. And then you will be able to see at the bottom that there's a broadcast DRI, direct remote ID, they call it. And then you'll see that there is a, a drone serial number. It starts with their uh, NC uh, serial number, which is the 1588 Echo. And then the rest of it, again, you can uh, go and verify that uh, it actually matches what is on the FA website right here. When you click on the Anafi AI, for example, you can see the serial number and then it starts from 0404 and it goes all the way to 0404 here. And that entire range, your aircraft needs to fit in there, your aircraft serial number. Now, the one thing we found interesting with the Parrot uh, application is that you actually have the ability to turn off remote ID, uh, which is interesting because the FA and the regulation doesn't allow that. Now it is possible also that this is something that will be changed over time. Uh, Parrot sells drone all over the world. There is remote ID all over the world. So they may have a different option for the United States. To be clear, the uh, FAA doesn't allow for remote ID to be turned off. It has to be on all the time and you won't be able to take off unless remote ID is functioning correctly. Now, if you get all the way here and you realize that you have a drone that doesn't have remote ID included in the aircraft in itself, then you're gonna to need to get one of these a remote ID module. Now, the one that we have here is the Drone Tag Mini. This is something that the manufacturer has sent us for testing. There will be a lot more. There's actually a few more that are approved on the FA list right now. So do some shopping, find the one that works for you. But this is essentially just an on-off button. You're gonna put this, you put. You can tell we put some Velcro right here. You put this on top of the drone, you turn it on, and then it's gonna start to broadcast. Now, how do you find information about your remote ID module? What is the serial number? Well, in this case, it's very simple. Right here in the back, it starts with one. 596 Foxtrot, which is drone tags uh, prefix. And then it's got the long uh, NC serial number right here. You'll be able to also register it on the FA website by simply going to the drone zone, adding a new device, and then it's gonna ask you for the type of device. You would pick remote ID module, fill out the information, put that serial number in here, and then you'd be good to go. Now we've covered the big manufacturers. Let's go ahead and take a look at how you would deal with the FAA in this case, in order to tell the FAA that your drone is remote ID compliant. And it is actually pretty straightforward. You're gonna to go to the FAA drone zone. We'll put a link down in the description. Once you're in there, you log in, or if you haven't yet, create a login for yourself. And then you'll be able to go and see your list of aircraft. If you already have some, I'll get started with that. You can go to manage device inventory. And we have quite a few drones in here. I wanna go ahead and show you the traditional UAS. We have uh, we haven't updated the Mavic 3 just yet. So I'm gonna click on that registration number here. And then on the right side, you notice that there's three little dots. If you've already registered your drone, there's three little dots right here. You click that and you're gonna click edit. And when you click edit, there's gonna be a, a question at the top. Does your drone broadcast FA remote ID information? Yep, we've identified that it does. So we're gonna go right here. We're gonna click yes. And it's gonna say, what is the UAS type? Is it a standard remote ID or is it using a remote ID broadcast module? This is the module. We just talked about it. Ours is gonna be a standard remote ID. So I'm gonna click on that. 
And then you see it says remote ID serial number. Well, in this case, it happens to be the same as our controller serial number, which we've had in here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click save. Now you notice it starts with 1581 Foxtrot, which is DJI's prefix. I'm gonna click save and that's it. It's really that simple. Now you notice there is no new registration number. If you've already registered, this doesn't change your registration number. Now, if you were to do a new registration, you're gonna click add device right here and it's asking you at the top, same question. Do you have, does your drone broadcast remote ID? Yes, it does. And then you're gonna pick standard remote ID and then you're gonna go with the manufacturer here. Let's say you have an Autel drone. You can give it a nickname. You can say, this is a Evo 2 V3. You're gonna put the remote ID serial number that you found. Add the entirety of the thing, including the five character number for the manufacturer for remote ID. Once you're done, click add device, pay you $5, and then you're good for three years. All right, well, I hope this video helped you clarify a couple things about remote ID. I know it's a confusing topic. On paper, it's actually not that difficult to register your drone. Go on the FAA website, find out if that serial number matches with what's been approved. Go to the FAA website to actually register, and then you're all good. Go and fly and then enjoy it. So if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. As always, we always like a like, a subscribe, and we'll see you for the next video.